Like the video or my waifu stabbed your dad in the back. Also spoilers. Part 1. White Clouds. Ethereal Moon. The Cause of Sorrow. Today's map is a spread out rescue mission. Dum Dum Green units being hunted all throughout the large... Map. Didn't we just do this? Large map? Corridors made for choke points? Green units to rescue? Green unit daddy? What the fuck? Well, I've basically covered this map already. The only real difference is the map is far less interesting and instead of fighting villagers, plus the death knight, we are fighting demonic beasts. I'm just gonna go ahead and give this map a 7 out of 10. While the map is vastly inferior in structure and design compared to chapter 8, fighting demonic beasts instead of villagers more than makes up for that as a fun challenge. With that out of the way, I'm gonna spend the rest of the video talking about fighting demonic beasts. Fighting demonic beasts is a unique experience in Fire Emblem. There hasn't been anything quite like them in any of the previous iterations of the game. These are the only units in the history of the series that take up multiple tiles, which changes how you look at the surrounding terrain, namely what makes an actual choke point and how to defend your squishy units properly. On top of that, there's more area for your units to surround and beat the ever-loving piss out of the monster. This goes hand in hand with the monster's barrier and the multiple health bars, turning each encounter with a demonic beast into an MMO-style raid boss. Strategically using your gambits to either aggro the beast with your tankier units, or to break the barriers in order to debuff his defenses. Breaking all the barriers results in a stun period, which leads to an eventual DPS race to push out as much damage before he regains his composure next turn. Of course, this is not always the norm. You have only had a handful of encounters with the beasties up until this point. You are getting used to fighting them, and your units still needed time to hit their stride. So one monster had always seemed like a major threat. Eventually the game starts throwing waves of beasts at you left and right, so instead of feeling like you're fighting a raid boss, it's like fighting a bunch of mini bosses. You would quickly run out of gambits if you use them on every monster you encounter, so you have to conserve your resources and start relying on your unit's other abilities to take care of them, which makes for interesting combat scenarios. There are a couple of caveats to that, however, as the demonic beasts carry some glaring issues. Their defenses are so pitiful and their speed is so average that once the barriers do come down, it's easy pickings. My go-to strategy has been use gambits to break all the barriers, or archers with their extra range to knock out one barrier safely, and then just rush in with my fisting units or my Lysithia. It is relatively easy to manipulate the beast's aggro line with a gambit from a tanky unit. Most of the extra skills they get on the extra health bars have never made a difference, and the AoE attacks almost never successfully go off. It's just too easy to move everyone out of the way. If it does go off, that's usually because it was a far better option for the player rather than fending off a normal attack. But hey, demonic beasts are still fun to fight, and it's another great step forward in Intelligent Systems' attempt to make fun and interesting changes to the Fire Emblem formula. So, tell me what you think about demonic beasts. Are they good? Are they bad? Let me know. And also tell me what you thought about this little rant. Should I sprinkle them in every couple of episodes? Should I make them into their own videos? Are they even worth seeing? What other things should I talk about? In regards to Fire Emblem game design, at least. I don't know. That's all for me. Hope to see you guys next time. Peace out.